we all know that you know predators love to prey on the weak and the chickens are definitely the weak species around here and you know it's basically a buffet line for a would-be predator so all right everybody welcome back to the school of preparedness and um once again thank you thanks for taking your time out to come and listen to me and watch me run my mouth and uh today is going to be a quick one just wanted to talk a little bit about how you know animals observing animals in their natural habitat and their instincts and, and what they do how you know what things we could pull away from what they do and apply to our own lives to be better protectors whether you're the father the mother and you're watching over your family and you know what things can we specifically pull away from what they do you know excuse the no noisiness but we uh we have two brand new great pyrenees puppies you can see one of them in the background um we got them specifically to help protect us on our property as well as our animals you know because we all know that you know predators love to prey on the weak and the chickens are definitely the weak species around here and you know it's basically a buffet line for a would-be predator so we got these great pyrenees to uh you know raise them up to basically watch over our house our property and the animals that we have so anyway i was uh I always watch my rooster. We have one rooster here and we call him Papa Roo. And, you know, Papa Roo, it's amazing to watch what these, what these animals instinctively do. But, so essentially, when I watch Papa Roo, I pay attention to what he does for the hens, how he watches over the hens, you know, his positioning, you know, how he, you know, how he follows them how he calls them, you know, things like that. And basically it's almost like he's on the, on an executive protection detail kind of where he's the, um, I used to call him body agent. So agent that's right next to the protectee, you know? So if you ever watch like the president out there, you're going to see one secret service guy real close to him. That's the body agent. All right. Um, but anyway, so a couple of takeaways, of what a rooster does and how he protects the hens all right first of all <clears throat> he's he's either standing in the middle of them or he's standing on the outskirts of them and he's watching the area and if say a group of them want to go further away from the coop area like walk because we let our we let our chickens outside during the day and let them you know free range all around the property so if a group of chickens kind of go pretty far away from the coop, you know, if it's like three or four, maybe five, he'll walk over there with them. So he's always, he's always walking a little bit further back. He's, you know, watching what they're doing, watching the area around them. And that's what we as protectors can do with our families when we're out. All right. So when we're out and about, that's what you can do. So you're walking with your family. So what I normally do is when I'm walking with my family and if I'm, you know, it doesn't matter if I'm concealed carry or if I'm not carrying anything, I always walk behind my family because that way I can protect anything coming from the back because, you know, the bad guys, they like to sneak, sneak attack you. They like to come from your blind side, you know, and excuse the puppy over there whining. What's going on? So I like to walk behind my family so that way I can handle anything that's coming from the back. So while, while I'm walking, um, I can, you know, every once in a while I turn around and look around behind me to see if anybody's following me. And um, that way I can look ahead. I can look to the left and right. So if I see potential threats in, in the front of us, I can maneuver in the front of them and I can get in front of them and be able to deal with that threat. Or if I see a threat on the left or I can, or potential threat on the right, I can move and protect them that way. If you're in the front 
of your family and you walk in front of them, it's a lot more difficult to be able to, you know, to get to the back and to maneuver around. But if you're in the back, you can easily do that a lot better, you know, because, you know, anytime you're walking around or driving, you always want to look out as far ahead as possible to look at potential threats or, you know, if you're driving on the highway, you want to be able to look out ahead to see if there's any stop traffic. Because if you only concentrate with uh, looking at a few feet in front of you, then you're not going to have enough reaction time to be able to do anything if something happens. So it's very important that when you're walking, when you're driving, you're always looking out ahead, always scanning your area. Remember, we're always doing situational awareness, practicing situational observational awareness whenever you're, whenever you're out and about, whether you're walking or driving. And so another thing the rooster does besides walking with the hens is he'll, he'll alert them if he sees something, right? If something's threatening, he alerts them and he has a specific call and when he does this call the hens know okay we got to get back to the coop you know we got to get back to where it's it's um you know there's protection right and it's pretty wild to see it like you all of a sudden you see these hens frantically sprinting towards their coop and you can hear the the rooster in the background you know making a specific call what's up dude so, real quick, that's my two Pier Great Pyrenees puppies. We call them, we name our dogs after Japanese desserts or foods. So these two guys, well, or Japanese names. So the boy's name is Senju and the girl is named Soba. My son has a TikTok account and his TikTok name is called Senjutsu. So that's kind of like why we named the boy Senju. But anyway, going back, so the rooster... He makes a call, right? And, uh, and the chickens know what it is and they know to get back to, you know, protection. So how can that relate to us, right? So before you go out anywhere with your family or your friends, you want to make sure that you, you have an understanding that if something happens, you know, you're going to go here, you're going to go there, right? And, you know, you can either even devise like a code word. So if you're, if you're, in a place sorry about that if you're in a place where there could be potential threats but you don't want to verbally say it you know you want to be quiet about it you that's where a co-work can come into play so if you're out at a restaurant or you're walking down the street and something happens you could say um you know blue or chicken soup you know some kind of code word or code words that let them know that hey there's a threat about let's do this and then if you have you have a plan in place and i always talk about that too always have a plan if you have a plan in place before you go to the movie theater you go to a restaurant you go anywhere out in public that um if something happens you know we're gonna go out this back exit you know as long as that exit is not compromised all right or we're gonna go you know out this you know, side door we're gonna go head towards the back you know where the kitchen's at so we can exit out the um the back alleyway you know where the deliveries are made you know and for a restaurant for example so you could do the same thing like what the chickens do right the rooster you know they they instinctively know that these specific calls they have to do something they there's danger there's something's going on there's a predator around something's Something happened and, you know, we got to get back to safety. You could relate the same thing for your family, right? And another thing a rooster does, and this doesn't really have much to do with actual security or physical protection, but it's more in the lines of just taking care of your family, right? So what you'll see a, a rooster do is if he's walking along with the hens and they're all pecking the ground, they're looking for food. And what the rooster do is he'll scratch the ground too, and every once in a while he pecks. But if he sees something, like if he sees some food, what he'll do is he'll uh, he'll alert the the hens to come over there, and he'll scratch the ground and let them know, okay, hey, check here, check on this spot right here. And the hens will will go over there and they'll peck the ground and go, you know, grab the food, you know. <laughs> so basically, he's looking out for them. He wants them to eat, and obviously. There's, you know, because he he procreates with them and he's, you know, his offspring is going to come through them. 
Of course he wants them to be healthier. Of course he wants them to be fed. Just like a man will protect his wife and the kids and or a mother will protect their kids and they want to make sure that their kids are eating, you know, want them to be healthy, right? Want them to grow. It's no different than with the rooster, the same thing. And so, you know, he shows them where the food is. Another thing what he does too is uh, we like to come out and this is this sounds crazy, but there's nothing wrong with it. But you know, we get a lot of eggs. We get about probably we have chicken twenty hens. 20 regular hens, and then we have four Brahma chickens, which are big ones. Um, maybe at the end of this, I'll show you guys. The Brahmas are the big ones, big chickens, and they're still kind of young. But we have 20 laying hens, and so we get about, we can get up around 15 to 18 eggs a day sometimes, and that's way more than what we can eat. And, you know, I don't try to sell the eggs. I don't have time for that, but, you know, I'll give them out to the neighbors if they, they want some. But, you know, so we have all these extra eggs. So what we do sometimes is we'll scramble the eggs up and cook scrambled eggs for them. Put, some, put a little ginger in there and things like that. And we come out and we throw the eggs down on the ground and the chickens love it. And it sounds like they're being cannibals, but it's, it's not. There's nothing wrong with that. So we cook the eggs up, add some uh, crushed eggshell to it to give them a little bit of uh, calcium type of uh, additive to it. Throw it down on the ground and the chickens come and they eat it. So another thing the rooster will do too is when we throw the chick, uh, the eggs down, he won't, he won't, he won't, he won't sit there and stop observing and protecting to eat. He'll let all the hens eat, and everyone because he wants to be looking around. He wants to ensure that everything's fine, right? So he's he's not going to lose. He's not going to get distracted by the food and totally zone in and get that tunnel vision of just the food and not pay attention to his surroundings like a lot of us might do, right? A lot of us do that with our phones. We get sucked in our phones and watching our phones and uh, we don't look at the area around us. So in this case, the hens, they're focusing on the food and they're not paying attention to the surroundings. And generally the chickens don't really pay attention to the surroundings anyway. That's what the rooster's for. So the rooster, you could throw a big pile of yummy food and the rooster will not go for it. And every once in a while, he'll take a second, he might peck down and grab some food. But he's going to sit there and be overwatch while the hens are eating their food. So that's what we can learn as humans, as fathers, as mothers, as brothers, as sisters, right? How we can, you know, learn from a rooster, right? How he protects his flock. We can apply those same principles to what we do as a family, as a father, mother, brother, sister, you know, uncle, nephew, you know, uncle, aunt, you know, when you're out with your family, your friends, you know, you know, this is the things that we can apply. And so some quick takeaways. When you're walking, when you're driving, always look out as far ahead as possible. Okay? Always look out as far ahead as possible. That way, you can see any potential threats happening or around you, you know, while you're walking. And always look behind you, right? When I mean, you're driving especially, you know, you look at as far as possible. You want to be able to react to any kind of, you know, problems, okay? And another takeaway, right? When you're walking with your family, you want to be in the back, all right? Always, every, you know, every so often, turn around and look behind you. Look to your left, look to your right, look out ahead. And that way you can, you can... You can make that change, and if you see threats coming from the left, the right, or from the rear, you can you can make that adjustment, and you can you know maneuver your family. You know you can you know tell them to to go to the left, go to the right, or take a left, take a right, and you know that way it helps helps you to protect them. All right. Another thing is have a pre-established communication right have a plan like the like the rooster does you know he has that call they know when they hear that they got to run back to the coop so you have that same kind of thing have some code words you know just have some specific things that you your family knows but it's not threatening and it doesn't alert anybody around you because you know just remember most people are sheep out there most people don't know what's going on most people only look at what's going on around them, okay, or what's directly in front of them, you know, whether it be the food they're eating, the phone they're looking at, 
you know, the steering wheel in front of them, the radio they're changing in the car. They're only looking right there. They're not paying attention to anything else around them. Don't be the sheep like everybody else. Okay, just pay it. You pay attention to what's around you. You have that plan with your family, you have that code word. Like I said, you know, before you go into wherever you're at, you already, you're already talking about what you're going to do if something happens, you know, play the what if game. So if, if something happens over here, we're going to go here. If something happens in, you know, outside in the parking lot, we're going to do this. If something happens inside of the building as we're walking out in the parking lot, we're going to do this, you know. The car, we're always going to park the car closest to an exit. We're always going to do this. We're always going to do that. And if you hear me say this word or if you hear mommy say this word or if you hear, you know, the baby, you know, the, the boy or the girl or the brother or the uncle or the cousin say this specific word, then we know we got to enact our plan. You know, something's happening or pay attention more or, you know, something's going on. So we need to be more alert. So have that communication plan, right? And next thing you know, just simple thing, take care, you know, I don't have to tell you this, but, you know, make sure you, your family's being fed. Make sure you're watching out for them. But if, if you are eating, if you are out in public, you know, don't just get, get tunnel vision at the restaurant and, and, sorry, just don't get tunnel vision in the restaurant and have your, uh, your face in your pasta because it's so good and you're not watching the guy that just walked in the front door and, you know, he's, his waistline's bulging and he's got a backpack on and he's got this mean look in his face and, you know, or you see these two guys sitting at the bar while you're eating or sitting at another table and they're looking around in a pretty suspicious manner and they're, they're talking to each other and, you know, you can read their lips and you can see that they're planning on doing something, you know, don't, you know, don't, don't get tunnel vision, you know, what's going, what's going on directly in front of you. Look around, always look around. So anyway. You know, it's kind of crazy to talk about how a rooster and learning from a rooster can, you can apply those same things to your family. But I just, just been thinking about it for like a last few days, just when I watched, when I'm watching what the rooster's doing, I thought, man, you know, you can apply that to us humans. So, but anyway, um, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching this or listening to this. And, you know, once again, it, you know, please hit subscribe. Please hit that notification bell. And if you're watching this or listening to this on the podcast, go over to the YouTube channel and check the video out where I'm actually talking to you now. And obviously, if you're on the YouTube channel watching this, then uh, you'll be able to listen to this on the podcast. But obviously, if you watched it, you're not going to want to listen to it. But anyway, once again, guys, thanks again for taking your time out to listen to me or watch me run my mouth. And, um, you know, please be safe. Please always watch your six. And remember, it's not being paranoid. It's being prepared. Yeah, yeah.